I suffer for 38 years along with a long list of other conditions and have spent the past six years researching, training and delivering a bespoke holistic programme and helping members accept and manage their illness. Hi, I'm Jane Gordon, treasurer of the group. I've known Julie and her family for years, but about six years ago, just after being diagnosed with fibro myself, I met Julie and discovered that she too has fibro and that she was setting up a support group. I felt that I had to be involved. Was this meant to be? In 2020, it was announced that the Fibro Active volunteers had been successful in receiving the Queen's Award for voluntary service and finally, we were presented the accolade on November the 23rd, 2021. You can see what happened on our website. So today we're just going to have a look at what fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome is. And then we'll look at um, how we brought Tai Chi into <laughs> to the group and the benefits of uh, training over the past few months and at the end we'd like you all to join in with us with the traditional eight brocades qigong to find out more you can go to the fibroactive.co.uk website so hold on to your dragon trousers it's going to be jam-packed 25 minutes and we'll begin our group programme is called the Fibro Five. The five ways to fibro wellbeing. It is split into three main categories. Keep active with our Tai Chi, Qigong and Otago classes and gentle walks. Keep learning with workshops on nutrition, symptoms and guest speakers, etc. And emotional support with coping skills arts for wellness and cuppa and chats. So what is fibromyalgia? It is estimated that 1 in 20 people globally suffer with fibromyalgia, which is a complex multi-system condition. Therefore, no single medication or treatment can fix fibro. There are just too many variables. The best approach to address um, each system within the body instead of merely treating the sim surface symptoms. And yes, fibro um, needs a multifaceted approach. Fibromyalgia is definitely not just pain. There are over 200 different symptoms in the syndrome. However, the five main symptoms include widespread roaming pain, fatigue, sleep disturbances, fibro fog and IBS. Each main symptom is affected by each of the others in a cycle that is very difficult to break. Furthermore, the symptoms are affected by our mental well-being. The lower the mood, the more the symptoms are increased. The conditions are deeply affected by stress at environmental, emotional and molecular levels. Basically, there is a complete onslaught on the central nervous system. Fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as ME, are closely related. The symptoms are so overlapping that many people treat them the same. Fibro is dominated by pain and when exceeding limitations, our symptoms exacerbate and our bodies go into a flare, whereas CFS is dominated by chronic fatigue and when we exceed our limitations our bodies crash as we do not replenish our mitochondria cells normally. Both conditions overlap with multiple chemical sensitivity which is one of the primary co-conditions to fibromyalgia and chronic and CFS. Symptoms often flare due to the toxins in the environment such as smells and toxic chemicals that are used in everyday products from laundry detergent, new upholstery to petrol and exhaust fumes. 
Many of us are unaware that our symptoms are constantly triggered by these toxins and we continue to surround ourselves in toxic environments at home, at work and outside and by the products we put on ourselves or consume. So we ask our students to attend Unperfumed. More information can be found on our website, just click on what is fibromyalgia. After a request from our members to try Tai Chi, we struggled to find an instructor. After seeing Chris Davenport throughout the summer for physio, Julie found a leaflet advertising Tai Chi classes, run by, would you believe it, Chris. So August 2016, a few group members signed up for the taster session with Chris. I was dependent on a mobility scooter at the time. I could barely stand and my arms felt like bricks. I will admit at first I found it really hard. I would clock watch as the, the fatigue became unbearable. However, after the first course I began to walk again and my pain levels started to become more manageable. At this time I was going through a difficult and stressful period with our business and I had just been diagnosed with fibro. I wasn't too keen on trying Tai Chi, but I'm so glad that I did. From that first taster, I realised that I had not thought about anything other than Tai Chi. It really was a big stress reliever and I was hooked. We were so impressed with how Tai Chi had improved our health and well-being that we couldn't keep quiet about it. So now we had a long list of other members who wanted to try it. Instead of our group dominating one of Chris's taster sessions, Impact Physio suggested that Chris should come to the group. So we applied for funding from Public Health and brought Chris into the programme. We soon saw big improvements in our group members and the sessions were increasingly popular. One of our most outstanding case studies was a group member, male, 60 years old. He could barely get from the car to the hall on crutches. We were all worried he was too frail. His first class we had someone standing behind him, which actually was me, and Chris was ready to say he couldn't carry on. But he was determined and he persevered. As the weeks went on, he reduced his dependency on crutches and started to walk with two sticks, then from two sticks to one. Then one day he forgot his stick. Now he can run through the whole form and occasionally will get up and demonstrate with us. However, he will not be recorded because he fears his benefits will be taken away and that's a debate for another time. As the classes grew, we became concerned how Chris would sustain the sessions with people starting at different stages of the course. Chris suggested that we trained as instructors and then we could assist him. I had been a coach in various sports for over 30 years, most recently a level one boxing coach. I thought my coaching days were over and at the time was a little anxious about my illness being so unpredictable. I was completely out of my comfort zone. I had avoided putting myself into positions where I would be watched or judged for most of my life. The teaching bit was not a worry, but the training bit caused me huge anxiety. I resorted to asking for help from a hypnotherapist and with her help, I did it. We were able to split the sessions into three groups and develop members at their own speed. As soon as we qualified, we converted our evening group sessions to Tai Chi. Due to the unpredictability of fibro, we always work together to keep professional standards. We are like yin and yang. I know when to take over from Julie as I instinctively know when she's starting to struggle. We were then approached by Strictly No Falling at Age UK Derby in Derbyshire and they asked us to sign up to their falls prevention programme and develop a couple more classes and we even got a small pot of funding to start up those classes. As our students developed we started a free Tai Chi in the Park practice session once a month. Some of Chris's 
students came along too. Lockdown happened and we had to adapt fast. We started Zoom sessions the following week for group members and Tai Chi classes. Zoom had been a lifeline to half of us, but those who do not have the internet, the technology or the skills have been isolated. We have found younger members, especially those with reduced mental health, have been scared to use it. Our classes initially continued on Zoom until we were allowed out to play. We kept the Zoom classes going for those shielding and the park classes catered for those who would only do face to face. So prior to lockdown, we had trained in Chris's classes and knew the forms reasonably well, apart from the sword. However, we started back in September face to face with a new improved falls prevention programme for all abilities from which the income sustains the group. The break from starting new beginners classes and all the intense training we had undertaken has really built our confidence. Our forms are more fluid and our knowledge has grown. This has enhanced our delivery as instructors and we have both acknowledged that we can identify our growth as Tai Chi players and instructors. At the same time, we also keep ourselves grounded as we still realise we are at the start of our Tai Chi journey. Fibro symptoms can change frequently throughout the day and for beginners who are unconditioned they will need to start off in very short sessions being very gentle as we are prone to trap nerves, cramp and trigger pain. The fatigue can make your limbs feel like you are holding bricks. It takes five times more effort and energy to do anything. It's not just what you do at the time, you pay the consequences from 24 to 72 hours later with post-exertional malaise. The eight brocades enables everyone to take something away no matter how they are feeling. Benefits include it's a short routine so it's manageable. We can adapt the number of re repetitions. It can be easily followed without the need to remember the moves. It calms the mind. It prepares the mind for learning. It can be done seated, so therefore it's inclusive. The gentle movements are effective and it's fairly static, mostly facing forward. Ideal for those who struggle to follow on Zoom. So if you'd like to get yourselves ready, we would like to invite you to go through our short warm up and then we'll go through the traditional eight brocades. We will see you in a moment. Okay, everyone, do you want to get yourself up and uh, get yourself some space and get ready to join Julie and Jenny? A bit of exercise. If everybody would like to get into posture, standing nice and relaxed, and just roll our shoulders forwards three times, feeling all of that rotation, nice and slowly. And then backwards three times. Bring your hands up to shoulder height, turn your palms, bring them in, tucking your chin in slightly, turn your palms outwards, push away and gently bow your head. We'll do that one more time, so lifting your hands, turning your palms, bring them in, push away and gently bow your head. So interlock your fingers, bring them up to chest height, push them away and turn your head to the left. Come back to centre, push your hands away and turn your head to the right. 
we'll repeat that once more to each side. Just lowering your hands down, we're going to do some simple side bends. So keeping your head in line with the spine, just lower your left hand towards your, low, your left foot. And come back to centre, and then over to the right, right hand towards right foot. We'll go once more to each side. we're going to do hip circles so placing your hands on your hips those seated you're just going to rotate between your sitting rounds the rest of us we're going to start with small circles and get larger as we go around so just giant nice gentle circles so once more I will change direction and get gradually smaller. And coming back to centre. We're going to bring our hands up as though we're holding a bowl. And we're going to turn to the left but push our right hand across the chest to the left, keeping your hips facing forward. Flatten the palm, turn it over and come back to centre. And then over to the right, flatten the hand and bring it back. So one more to each side. We're going to bring our hands into prayer position, taking our weight onto the right leg, step out, give your left foot, and soften your knees, come into a horse stance. We're going to push our hands up, raising up, don't lock your knees, opening your arms, palms facing down, gradually sinking down, turning your hands, and coming back up and sinking back down into full stance. I will do that one more, so pushing up. Opening your hands, softening your knees. It's coming back up. Into full stance. Relax your hands. Lift out of full stance, take weight to the right, step in with your left foot. We're going to bend forward now, so we're going to interlock our hands. Step the left foot forward and reach towards your foot. Just go as far as is comfortable to you, just to feel a stretch. Come up. Step forward with the right foot. And we're going to go one more to each side. And relax. And now Julie's going to take us through the traditional eight brocades. Okay, standing in posture, relaxing the shoulders and the knees, arms beside you, focus the thoughts. Bring the hands around onto the dantian, 
right in for ladies, left in for gentlemen. Three deep breaths. Hands to the side, taking half a stride out, centralizing the weight. Bring the hands out and up, keeping the palms facing outwards, looking up between the gap in the fingers at the top. Pressing the, the heel of the hand, turning the palms, bringing them down slowly down the center line. Taking the hands out again, breathing in nice and smoothly. <clears throat> looking at the gap between the hands, turning the palms, breathing out. Breathing in. One more time. <clears throat> Into horse stance, sinking down with the knees, making sure they're in line with the ankles. Crossing palms, so the left hand is on the inside. Make a point with the left hand and draw back. Bring the hand back to centre on the outside of the cross, making two fists. Make an inside hand at a point and draw back. Bring the point back to centre, make two fists. Make a point with the inside hand and draw back. Bring the point back to centre, make a point with the inside hand and draw back. Bring the hand back round to centre again, lowering the hands, bringing the stance back in. Crossing the palms again, with the left hand on the inside, lifting the right hand up towards the ceiling, left hand down towards the floor, pushing the heel of the palms in each direction. Coming back to centre, crossing the palms, right hand on the inside, reaching up. Back to centre again, crossing the palms, and up. Breathing out as we come down, breathing in as we come up. Bring the hands back to the cross in the centre, lowering the hands down. Bring the hands out to the side, we're turning to look back. To the left, turn the hips, the waist, and looking over the shoulder. We back the hand at the back of the head, and the hand at the back of the, the lower back. Coming back to forward again, arms out straight, turning to the right. to centre and to the left. Back to centre and to the right. Hands down. Back into horse stance again. Keeping the hand on the neck line, sinking down, knees in line with the ankles. And we're going to do side bends, going over to the left, breathing out as we go down, breathing in as we come back up. 
out as we go down, in as we come back up, and again, keeping the head in line with the spine, don't allow it to travel. Coming back into stance, lifting the hands up, sliding them down that invisible wall. Taking the hands down as low as you can go. Taking the hands behind the legs from the ankles up, massaging to the lower back. Keep that as a support as you bend, forward, bend pelvis forwards, keeping the head facing upwards and looking straight ahead. Again. Down the invisible wall. Hands massaging the back of the legs, supporting the lower back as you push the pelvis forwards, keeping the head forwards. <clears throat> keeping the legs straight as you come down. Keep that support in place. Don't allow your neck to drop back. One more time. Keeping the hands at your side, making two fists. We're going into all stance again. Sinking down, keeping the knees in line with the toes. We're going to push forwards, looking wide-eyed and angry at the back of the hand. Grasp the air, bring it back. Pushing through resistance, nice and slowly. One more time to each side. Coming back into stance again. Hands this behind your back. I'm going to heel lift onto the toes. Drop down a little way and then to the floor, nice and gently, nothing too high. One more time. Bringing the hands to the sides, stepping feet together, bringing the hands round on the dantian. Three deep breaths. Hands to the sides. 